December dates are already booked and then January dates are not out yet. So can't talk too loud because this one is sleeping. So we are on our way to um, Dakar. Then they called us back to the window after. But it was, I see the donkey. I already saw the donkey. I told you I'm doing work right now. The reason I'm a little nervous is because I have travel plans based on the estimate time that they gave me. We registered her name on uh, the birth record for our neighbor. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another video. This is Afro Millennial Mama. I forgot to introduce myself. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. If this is your first time, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm talking about uh, our experience with applying for the citizenship and passport for my newborn who was born in Senegal. So I hope you enjoy. Our neighborhood, I guess, for our city. Um, so we, um, what happened was Tuesday, I would have went to the registrar's office, but they said the book for reporting births is with the chief of the neighborhood, the elder that's in the village here, and, um, and he doesn't, but he doesn't know how to read or write, um, so we have to write the name, but first Tuesday we tried to go there and they said he has it, the book at his house. So then the guy was working, I think he's a fisherman or something. So we had to wait till 11 o'clock at night, go to his house and ask for the thing. He said, no, I left the book there at the, at the office with somebody. So then Wednesday, I'm going to go back to the office, to the, to the register, whatever, reg registrar's office, I guess you would call it. And then, um, and then they said, no, we don't have it. So he found them, they had it, they didn't know who who had it in their possession. He found it and they gave the book to Amadou because they're like, the chief of the neighborhood of your neighborhood has to do it. it. Has to fill it out and bring it to us. So Amadou took the book, he brought it home. So he so had it. anyway. So he had it. And he's like, okay, so I'm just gonna take it to the guy. So today, uh, which is Thursday. Um, today's Thursday, yeah. Um, How many days postpartum? Five? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah, five days. So uh, he wrote, I saw him write um, the name, like he wrote it in there because the guy doesn't read or write. So, so he wrote it himself. He wrote my name in there as the mother, his name as the, um, you know, the father and stuff. And then from there, we have to get a birth certificate, which, I mean, we have a birth certificate, but from the hospital or whatever, but the official one uh, i don't know how long that takes um, or what exactly would need to happen um but i already i'm trying to make an appointment with the u.s embassy so i need a birth certificate or birth record or something like that i don't know how long it'll take for that to come out but he took the book to the person that's responsible the chief of the neighborhood and then that person have to ask the rest of the process. That Papers person, they fill out like it says this person blank is born on this day to this person and this person and you just basically write it in. So I'm thinking the birth certificate is just hand handwritten like it doesn't have to necessarily, you know, take a long time to process. It should just be able to be written and then stamped like notarized or whatever. I paid for registering um the baby as a U.S. citizen born abroad, and I just have to make an appointment, but there's no appointments. It's um, November, and December dates are already booked, and then January dates are not out yet, so I have to, I'm going to be checking every day to see if I can, um, to see if I can register when the appointments come out. So I can register that and have that already in the works because I actually wanted to travel with the, the two girls at um, in February. So I don't know. Hello. Can't talk too loud because this one is sleeping. But we are on our way to um, Dakar uh, for our embassy. 
emergency appointment. This is Afro Millennium Mile, by the way. Um, we're on our way to go uh, to an appointment. So, for people who are U.S. citizens who have um, give birth abroad, there's a process called what's that? CRBA citizen or CBRA citizen born abroad. I, maybe I got it jumbled up. But anyway, citizen born abroad something. So there's a certificate uh, of citizenship that has to be uh, granted when you're born abroad to U.S. Um, citizen parents. Um, so there's paperwork that has to be filled out. You have to get a birth certificate. So in our scenario, we get the birth certificate from here. You get the same process as in the States. You get a birth certificate uh, or a certificate of of um, childbirth or delivery proof that you gave birth to someone from the clinic, hospital, doctor, midwife, what have you. And then from there, you take that to get it registered with the city, either where the child was born or where you reside. Um, and so that's another process. So you put the birth on record there and then you get your extract of birth record as well as a birth certificate like the real one. I think here there's different versions of birth. There's a typed version, there's a written version, there's one that shows proof. I think the typed version is the one that shows proof that it's in the system like the, the community the community, the computer system in the country, right? Something like that, yeah. So the actual birth certificate is is written, and I've seen Amadeus too. It's the same, but then they have the re the on record what's on file in the whole c country, I guess. And that one is um, you get a printout of that. So that's what you bring to your appointment, along with any other requirements that they ask for proof of your citizenship and set a residency in the states and you know you could bring I think uh, taxes or uh, uh, your bills and things that you have from the states and show proof that you reside there or you're a resident there as well so that's what we're gonna do so we got an appointment this afternoon so we left a little early just in case there was traffic or anything like that and um, we have a little one so you never know you might have to pull over and feed her change the diaper blow out something and uh, so we just wanted to make sure we had enough time so i'll be back after we go let you know how it went I, there's no phones allowed in there so if you ever have an appointment you gotta leave a phone somewhere um just so you know all right i'll be back later bye she's finally asleep she needs to sleep <laughs> i need sleep Okay, I am back. I almost forgot about you guys for, for a minute. Once we got out of the appointment, we hadn't had our phones, so once we got to the car, I was back on my device, <laughs> calling people back or texting and so forth. So, uh, <clears throat> I made it home. Baby is with grandma. Ooh. 
chair hurt my back. Oh, let me close this. There we go. Ah, <sighs> so now I'm cool. And then I was nursing and stuff like that too. But um, so how did it go? I think it went really well. Um, they let us know the time frame for right now. The processing is averaging about three weeks to to a month, three to four weeks or so like that. So they said in about a month, we should have both documents, which would be her certificate of citizenship abroad. I'm vlogging right now. Um, and also uh, the passport. Which is great, because I was under the impression that it was two different processing times. I said I was vlogging, and you come in anyway? Mm. You don't even know what's going on. What is it? I'm talking about the passport application process. So people, if they have a baby in another country, and they, they're they uh, citizens of the U.S., they can know what to do. So... Uh, yeah, so we brought all the documents. I had extra documents for verification because you have to prove that you, like I was saying before, that you resided in the States. So the requirement is five years that you had uh, been physically, physically in the States, I think. So they need to know, like, when you come and go. I was under the impression that they meant residing, so, like, long term, like, uh, how we're living here right now. But they said that, um, like when you when we got there, she I had to fill out another form, just showing like they said, you know, when did you ever leave the country? And I was like, since I was a teenager, I I left. And so they said, well, then um, you've been in the states, you meet the requirements, so just put. But I'm like, I can't remember off the my head, unless I can look at all my passports. I think I have three. Um, all my passports and see how many times I went here, how many times I went there. I kind of remember, but even being there, I have some of that in my phone because I have a list in my phone of countries I've been to and stuff. But um, but they don't let you bring your phone, so. Um, but yeah, it was a whole bunch of people with babies there, uh, new babies like newborns. I want to say four or five. No, don't water it too much. That's why that's why it was getting overwatered. It's a desert plant. Leave it leave it for a while cuz you watered it the other day. Thank you. That's so sweet. You can put just a little. Just to put a little bit of water. Like drip drip and on the other side like that. Cuz I don't think it needs it. That's good. Cuz I think the water was killing it. I don't know. A lot of my plants didn't make it through my pregnancy. It's one thing about being pregnant. You like can't do all the stuff you want to do. No. Your sister's crying. Go see what she's doing. I'm trying to concentrate on the video, please. I don't appreciate this. Hey. No. Not right now. Wait till I finish. I'm almost done. No, go. Go away. You're distracting me. Go check on your sister. She's crying. Close the door so the bugs don't get in my room. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, um, anyway, so uh, so that was one, I guess, discrepancy that they had me correct. And I think um, we put, the way it works here, you can report. Okay, so for example, I'm, I'm from Los Angeles. I'm, I'm just go, 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 go until I finish. Can you wait till I finish and talk to me, please? Close the door. Go away. I'm not here. So, um, you can report the birth in a different county kind of thing. So, like, if I'm from Los Angeles, but I was born in Gardena. It's like uh, the city of Gardena. You know, you can go to Gardena Registrar Office or you can go to Los Angeles Registrar Office. That's kind of what it direct, like how it works here. So we had the option to report the city that, that she was born, where the, uh, the medical clinic was, or where we reside. 
So we had to make sure that everything corresponded with where we wanted that to be with where she, her birth was recorded, which is where we live. But you, we could have reported it in the city where she was born, which is one city over. But you'd have to go to that office to do that. So we just did it here where we live. It's more convenient. And that's the place where you go if you ever need a printout of your birth certificate again, which a lot of people do. It's very, it's pretty quick from what I understand. So, uh, and people do a lot of time. I remember when Amadou was moving to the States, he had to request his stuff over again, which is, I guess people, you know, don't always have the original, which is not as, you know, much of a problem. I, I you know, so that's cool. Um, so that was another thing that was brought up to us. But uh, we paid for the 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 citizen abroad process. That was done. I applied online, completely online, and provided everything online as well as brought the originals. So you can pay that online. It was interesting because I was hesitant because sometimes websites say that they are from there and they're not. Uh, wh who they say they are but this was a certified thing and I nobody had shared the website with me I had looked it up someone told me the process and I was googling it I think even before we moved because I was pregnant before we moved uh, and so I was looking to see what the process was I wanted to know what the citizenship situation is like for a, someone born outside of the US and how it works and everything so unless they're born on like a, in, if you if you're working for the U.S. government in some capacity, then your children, it's they have the same rights as if they were born in the states, to my recollection. However, if it's not a government uh, uh, mission or something, then I think you're. That you can't be president. I think that's the only thing you can't be president, run for president. And you also can't, like your children won't automatically get U.S. citizenship. So, a lot of people, what they do is they go stateside and give birth. So, that's something that my child will have the option to do if that's something that's important to them. It may not be uh, at that time. Um, I think for me, the, the most important. Thing is uh, the access for traveling. Um, so the passport is what I. Oh, there's a donkey. I heard something making noise. So to have the passport to travel, to have both, is even better because a lot of countries neighboring here uh, don't request a a visa for a Senegalese citizen, but they do for a U.S. citizen like Ivory Coast, Ethiopia, Mali, things like that. Maybe even like Guinea-Bissau, you know, a lot of West African countries. So that's why I think that having a Senegalese passport is, is um, useful. And then uh, also for the U.S. passport, there's a lot of countries that Senegal, you would need a visa and do the whole send your passport in and wait for approval and all that stuff. So it's good to have both. You can use, pick and choose which one you use, and so forth and so on. I think the baby's hungry, but uh, but yeah, I think it went well. We we stayed there for a while. We stayed there for over an hour, maybe an hour and a half or so, because we had to wait. They photocopied all our original documents and um, I guess processed everything, stamped it, and then they called us back to the window after. But it was I see the donkey. I already saw the donkey. I told you I'm doing work right now. Anyway, it's going to be time for me to feed the baby soon. They're about to bring her to me, so. Yeah, that's her crying. She wants to eat. And I think mosquitoes. Are mosquitoes coming out? I don't know. It's a nice breeze, though. Hopefully it's not mosquitoes. So, that's what happened. It felt like um, uh, we were there for about an hour and a half. It's, I didn't have my phone, so it was hard to tell. But, um, but it went fairly well, and it was a whole bunch of babies in there. Um, and, uh, so we'll see what happens in the next week or so, hopefully, hopefully sooner than later, so that could be done. And then once you have your certificate of citizenship 
born from being born abroad, whatever that's called, um, then you can apply for the Social Security card, which here the office is in France. You get the certificate and you fax. You get a. You go back to the embassy and get it notarized or something like that, along with something else. I don't know, birth certificate maybe, and then that is um, sent to fax over or sent over to France office for Social Security. Then you get that because I, I was thinking, oh, maybe you don't need a Social Security number. I don't know. But for for taxes and stuff, in order to claim dependents, they have to have a, a Social Security number, which I realized when I went to sign on and start my taxes, I like to start them early, like just to update my information. I do them myself online. And uh, so when you do that, you need a number so so we could do that but that could be done you could also go to the states and apply for that too um if you you know travel or whatever which you'll be able to do if you get the passport once you get the passport so i think that's everything let me go feed the baby but i just wanted to share that in case anybody has questions because i was googling a, up a storm before we moved because i was a little nervous after doing the um immigration process the k-1 visa 90 day fiance that's basically what i did um you know i realized how <laughs> very much like like the u.s can be sticklers for a lot of stuff and so i wanted to make sure i had everything all the knowledge let me put this here i'm about to close this door all the knowledge that i needed and all the documents and thankfully we were organized enough where we could find everything uh, naturalization certificates, uh, tax tax returns, and you know different things like that. Uh, I don't know why this light is on. Okay, probably my kid. So that's that. I'm so glad that's done. I was thinking about when the baby was going to be born. Like, when can I make the appointment? Because the appointment took two months. She was born. In November early November and the appointment is early right now it's uh, the 3rd of January today um, so it took I think I did the first week she was born as soon as I got home I did whatever application I could do so in a week the application was done because I didn't want to wait because I need to be able to move I was sitting while I was pregnant couldn't go anywhere um, and so I definitely want to start traveling again and because she's a baby she'll be with me and also because she flies for free until she's two so I will be on the move God willing hey guys I'm back today is uh, February 7th and on yesterday I got an email that the CRBA the citizenship abroad I guess certificate or something is ready for pickup um, I'm a little nervous because I'm expecting the passport, but I didn't get uh, an email regarding that uh, for pickup. But I'm assuming they're together. We have one receipt to pick up both. So I'm assuming that's for that. Even though I email and they say they haven't got the passport yet. I received an email on the 26th of January that the passport was on its way. And that's from the passport port office or whatever in the States. When I contact them, they said, yes, it's been sent, but to track it, you have to contact the embassy because it's been sent to them. The embassy has not said any specifics about tracking it or whatever. They just said, we're waiting for it from Washington, D.C. We haven't got it yet. So I emailed them again and asked them, if I got an email to pick up my CRBA, um, would that be with the passport? They didn't respond to that question specific directly. They just said, we haven't received it yet. We're waiting on it. They repeated the same thing. We're waiting on it from Washington, D.C. We'll email you when we get it. So the reason I'm a little nervous is because I have travel plans based on the estimate time that they gave me and in exactly one week. And uh, so uh, uh, my husband, Amadou, went to go pick it up. We'll know by 2 p.m. today if the passport is with the thing. I'm crossing my fingers, praying to God, please, Lord, um, you know, so I can have that underway. I'm not the type of person that likes to do last minute or uncertain stuff. Um... But I really tried to apply for this passport as soon as my child was born because I didn't want any delays. And the thing that was the most, like the biggest delay was the appointment. Um, I applied in November, early November, and the appointment we got was 
in the first week of January. That was the first available appointment. So unfortunately, because of that, I'm delayed. Uh, I have like a month and a half to get to receive everything. So uh, I bought tickets that I can change, but I don't want to change them because people have taken off work. They were going to visit and have made arrangements and scheduled things and reserved things. So I really wouldn't want the hassle. And where we're going, it's summer vacation there. So they're, they're, the children are out of school and that would work because I'm bringing my children. So, you know, so anyway, that's what's going on. But I will let you know if we get it, please. I pray that we get it today. Um, otherwise, if I don't get it by a word by Friday, I will have to postpone. And I don't know what day to postpone it to. Hopefully everything is refundable and changeable and people can just go to work and postpone their vacation. But I just don't. I don't like that. But, you know. What, it's not in my hands, but I'm just it sucks because the people said, oh, generally, even they even told us that the passport comes before the CRBA. That's what one person said. One lady at the front desk or that we met with had said, what did she say? Uh, three to four weeks to get the passport. And it took five weeks to get or four weeks to to get an alert that the passport was on its way here. And then they said that takes another two weeks for it to get here approximately. So the two weeks will be this Friday, the 9th, from that day. And I'm just like, okay. But then they said, yeah, about a month to get the passport. And you get, and then they said, you get it together. So one person said, you get it together. One person said, what passport will come first. So we'll see if they're together, because obviously the passport didn't come first. But I don't know, people just tell you different things. And when I got the email that they hadn't got, the second email that they hadn't received my passport yet here at the embassy, um, two minutes after that, I got another email saying that the CRBA was ready. So I'm thinking maybe these people aren't communicating. The person answering these emails doesn't, you know, work in the same department. But anyway, I'm going to do this in the car right now. So we'll see. He's making me nervous because he's like, I told you not to boot tickets. And I'm like, I have two kids. I have an infant I'm flying with. I need to make sure we have the right seats. Um, you know, I'd rather book and pay more to have flexible tickets then last minute and not have the seating that I need to be able to put the baby down and eat my food. And it's a long trip. We're going to uh, Central America, God willing. Um, so that's my push gift to myself. But anyway, I just want to update you so you know how this process works. Because I would definitely have benefited from a video on this, uh, you know, before going through this process. All right. Update coming soon. Okay, so I have good news and not good news. Um, so we picked up the uh, consular report of birth abroad and um, the passport was not there. They said they hadn't gotten it yet, so they haven't gotten it yet. Um, I was able to cancel my trip and get a full refund. Um, I'll just have to rebook. I didn't want to book to change it and then uh, have to change it again because um, apparently the time estimated time frame is not correct so that they gave us um, that anyone gave us so you know it may come in two days but I don't want to take that chance and feel rushed to even go on the trip with the short days notice so and pack and all that with kids by myself so, I um, told the people that we're going to visit that, uh, you know, I will probably postpone it another week. Um, but I'll wait until I get the passport and then just book it. Even if, even if it's, um, you know, I book it and I leave in two days, that's fine. I'd rather have the passport when I'm booked. Which is what I wanted, but anyway. I just got my hopes up when they told me, oh, four to five, no, three to five, four weeks a month. And then you get the email that it's on its way, and I'm thinking, oh, they probably ship it by plane or something, or send, so send it with somebody, and it's probably going to be here in a week or less. And, you know, it's been, it's almost two weeks. So, yeah, so um, if we get notice tomorrow, which is Thursday or Friday, then we can go pick it up on Monday. Um, you know, but at least if I know it's there, I can, you know, get the ticket that I need to get, and uh, and we can 
go get the passport whenever um, it's convenient for my husband to go there. But we did get the one thing, which is good, you know, for taxes and stuff. We have to apply for this so she can get a um, social security card. So we can do that from abroad also, um, or, in the, or when we ever go to the States. But this is what it looks like. Um, so I think uh, if that's positive, that means that the application that we submitted, everything was correct, um, you know everything was submitted that was submitted was um, accepted they accepted that I'm a citizen and my husband's a citizen and, and uh, of the US and um, so they gave citizenship to our child which is a good thing so step in the right direction the passport is on its way so we'll get it when we get it um, but I'll follow up with you guys once you know when that is so that way I, uh, people will know and they won't make the mistake I did of booking and making plans with people before you get it <laughs> Greetings everyone. Today is February 13th. Just update. I emailed the embassy yesterday was Monday the 12th of February. I emailed them because I was like, okay, it's over two weeks now, so I should get it. Um, and so this morning at 9.30, I got an email that it is ready for pickup. So I'm glad I emailed them because had I not, maybe they wouldn't have checked or looked for it perhaps. So I was gonna wait till uh, another day, till tomorrow. But I'm glad I emailed them yesterday. I thought maybe I'm bugging them or something, but um, but they responded and it's there. So we're gonna pick it up this week, and I'll be able to travel finally. So that means that we got the we got the uh, CRBA, whatever it is, citizenship abroad, some counselor, something, report of citizen abroad, something. We got that like a, basically a week before we got the passport so just in case you guys oh what's this on my eye anyway just in case you guys um are trying to do the same process whatever approximation they give you i would add a month to that or three to four weeks in addition to what they tell you because we got our passport mailed here on the 26th of January and it is now the 13th of, uh, of February and we applied our appointment was on the 3rd of January and we submitted everything requesting an appointment back November <laughs> so just to give you a time frame from November to now uh, it's basically three months yeah, the baby is three months. So, yeah, it was is a, basically a three-month process from when you apply at this particular time here in this country. Just to give you an idea. So, so I'll show you the passport when we get it. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, that concludes this video of vlogging our experience with applying for citizenship abroad as a United States citizen uh, for, for uh, our newborn and the time process in getting it. So now I was supposed to actually leave for my trip tonight, which in all intents and purposes, I would have been able to pick up the passport and still travel. However, I'm not packed and I didn't buy little souvenirs for my friends. And yeah, <laughs> I have stuff to do. And I canceled my ticket, so I'm gonna postpone it to next week. But, um, but yeah, so I could have, but, and also today there's a, protesting where there's a walkout scheduled uh, in the capital so picking it up would have been a hassle or potentially an issue yay finally got the passport oh, talk about being in a rush and nervous I mean it's better to just do it when you don't need it than to wait till you need it but I hadn't traveled in so long that I wanted to travel as soon as possible so that's why I was in this rush but yeah just for anybody who needs to know that and the emergency travel they do make accommodations for that and rush when it when you're out abroad but you have to be going back to the states and you also have to be like for medical or something you have to be in the emergency you know something like that so yeah which this is not all right thanks for watching see you on the next video
Black people, we the coolest, we the baddest, we the flyest, we the realest. I love y'all. Peace.